Canada is headed to the World Cup of soccer. Yes, Canada, the place known mostly for its winter sports, has punched its ticket to the 2022 tournament in Qatar. The first time the men's side has made the World Cup in 36 years, and only the second time in history. In 2014, they were ranked 122nd in the world. Now, they're 38th. So how did the program manage this remarkable turnaround? And what might the future have in store for Canadian soccer? Let's break it down. Sit back, relax, and take this in. Let's go back, all the way back to September 14th, 1985. Madonna, Phil Collins, and Wham! filled the airwaves. Back to the Future was the number one movie at the box office. And in St. John's, Newfoundland, the Canadian national team had just qualified for its first ever World Cup after beating Honduras 1-0. Their first foray into the tournament, though, was a bust, as the Canadian side didn't score a single goal, let alone win a game in their three group stage matches in the 86 Cup in Mexico. Since that humbling defeat, Canadian soccer has been on quite the roller coaster ride. If all the roller coaster ever did was just nosedive. The nation's bid to reach the World Cup for the second time in 1994 came up short when Canada lost to Australia in an intercontinental playoff semi final in penalty shootouts. In 2000, Canada won the CONCACAF Gold Cup but followed it up by never reaching the final round of World Cup qualifying. In 2012, in a do or die qualifying match, Canada lost 8-1 to Honduras in what was their worst loss since 1993. But in 2011, just a year before the men's embarrassing loss at the hands of the Hondurans, something had changed. This man is that something. John Herdman, a former primary school teacher in England turned football coach who was hired on to take over the Canadian women's soccer team. With the help of international superstars Christine St. Clair and Diana Matheson, Herdman led the women to a gold medal finish in the 2011 Pan American Games and two bronze medals in the 2012 and 2016 Olympics. In 2018, Herdman made the jump from women's to men's competition, taking on the daunting task of rejuvenating Canada's men's soccer program. And though there was much work to be done when Herdman took charge, he made it clear from the get-go that his goal was for Canada to qualify for the 2022 World Cup. And as ambitious as it sounded at the time, Herdman helped Canada realize those lofty dreams. In 2019, after years of incremental progress, Canada qualified for the top division in the CONCACAF Nations League following an undefeated campaign. Most notably in the Nations League, they defeated their American rivals 2-0 in Toronto for the first time since 1985. Canada ultimately failed to qualify for the Nations League final that year, but a bright future was around the corner. Mainly because Herdman got his players to buy into the vision, his so-called pyramid to brotherhood, and because Canada's talent crop began to blossom. Bayern Munich's Alfonso Davies and Lille's Jonathan David, two of Canada's brightest international soccer stars, came into full form. Herdman even spent a year convincing Portuguese Canadian midfielder Steven Ustakio to switch allegiances. This time around with Herdman, Davies and David leading the charge, Canada's World Cup qualifying road had its fair share of iconic moments. In October, Jonathan Osario netted the country's first goal since 1980 at Azteca, the Mexico City Stadium, where Canada had been outscored 16-0 over their previous four matches dating back to 1993. Just a couple of months later, when the Mexican side traveled to Canada, they saw players diving into snowbanks pitch side in Edmonton as Kyle Lahren scored the game-winning goal for the Northerners. Against the Panama team in Toronto, where tempers were high, it was Davies' heroic 65th minute goal that opened the floodgates and led to a 4-1 win for the Canadians. And even when Davies was sidelined with heart inflammation, following about with COVID-19, Canada pressed on, with guys like Laren, Sam Atakube, Junior Hoylett, and Captain Atiba Hutchinson stepping up in his absence. This year, they beat Honduras, the United States, and El Salvador in clean sheet victories, thanks in part to their trusty goalkeeper, Milan Borian, to put them atop the CONCACAF leaderboards, and only one point away from qualifying for a top three seed and a World Cup berth. They had the chance to do so in Costa Rica on March 24th, but suffered a 1-0 loss. Three days later against Jamaica, at Toronto's snowy BMO field, Canada didn't make the same mistake, beating them 4-0 and clinching the country's first World Cup berth in 36 years. And despite losing to Panama in their final World Cup qualifying game, they finished first in the CONCACAF, 
with the group stages set to be drawn for Qatar on Friday. But there's still work to be done, according to Herdman, who wants the team to try to make it to the knockout stages in Qatar this winter, with their star Davies expected to return. And with Canada, the US and Mexico playing host for the 2026 World Cup, there's a real chance the country becomes a mainstay in the tournament. And hopefully, that influences future generations of Canadians to pick up the sport. And while winter sports like hockey have dominated the country's international success thus far, soccer, or football if you will, is entering a golden era in Canada, 36 years later. And before we let you go, if you're interested in rocking some of our score gear, check out all our apparel at shop.thescore.com. You can find the link in the description. Go get yourself a hoodie, a crew neck, or a tee, because, well, they look dope, don't they? We'll see you next time.